It's late. Appreciate you coming out. Um, it's good to get a W. We're one and zero in the Temple season, and that was what we set out to do. So very pleased with that. A lot of things we got to get better at. A lot of things we got to work on. Um, but I thought there was a lot of good too that happened tonight. So um, with that, I'll kind of open it up to questions. Responded after uh, Temple scored there in the early in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you know it was a, it was a weird night. You know, I felt like there were several times in the first half that we could have blown the game wide open, and for whatever reasons, it didn't happen. Uh, and then we hit some adversity, and you know, I thought that's an improvement. Like that thing could have gotten away, it could have slid down and really been a, a nail biter. And instead, they said no. No, it's, this is what's going to happen. They took the ball away twice. Um, had a good drive, answered the bell with whatever it was, 23 points after that score. So, yeah, that, that's a positive for sure. Proud of him. Rick, can you tell us what happened with the uh, unsportsmanlike call? And uh, was any part of that trying to fire up your own team? I don't remember that. What was what was that about? You got, you got flagged for I did? I thought it was you. Was it not you? No, it wasn't me. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, I'm not real proud of that. All right? I, I, uh, I said to my son, I said, uh, have I ever had one of those before? He goes, yeah, Dad, last year at Ohio State. And I was like, well, that's different. I was protecting my player on that one. But, uh, yeah, I'm not very proud of that. That's losing. That's not good. And you know what? I can disagree with officials, but it doesn't mean I can go on the field. That's not, that's not what uh, you're allowed to do. It's not, it's not right. So I'm going to have to pay my penance on that one. And then even prior to the game tonight that indicated Jay Patel could have the night that he did. You know, it was early in the spring. He, he, he won the job in the spring. Um, was very consistent in the spring and then in the summer just continued to do that. So coming out of spring, he was the one and he just kept doing it. And same thing in training camp. So, uh, you know, he and, and Jude have a great relationship. They work together. Jude has a really strong leg. So, you know, we, we may use him in that role, too. I was thrilled tonight with both those guys. I mean, they three for three on field goals, 51-yarder, and then uh, Jude knocked every one of them out, you know, touchback. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. And then, you know, I think Flynn is really starting to get his, get his feel, you know, it's uh, replacing some big shoes to fill, and he's done a good job. So pleased. And then Mike snapped tonight in long snaps. And uh, he did a good job, and Jake snapped in short snaps. So I think we got a bunch of new specialists that are stepping up, which is good. So did you tell Flynn how Gavin performed tonight? Yeah, you know, I think he performed very efficiently. Um, no turnovers, two weeks in a row. Um, threw the ball. I mean, the one ball he threw to, to uh, Jaquay Jackson was beautiful. Um, he had another throw on the deep over that got called back on the, on the holding penalty. So there were some really nice balls. The last, at the end of the half, we told him if it isn't, you know, if you're any question, throw it out of bounds. We're not going to get, a, you know, any, anything silly here. I thought, he, I thought he managed the game right. He played well. Um, he took some hits, which I hope he's, he's going to be OK tomorrow. Uh, I think he is. But, um, you know, he's been sacked one time, which is a tribute to the line as well as him, knowing where to go with the football and getting it out of his hands. So, you know, overall. Overall, I think another step in the right direction. Craig, one goal line stand, two interceptions, about a dozen passes deflected. Just what can you say about how well your defense played tonight, especially against the pass? Yeah, you know, what, what you have uh, with Warner is a guy that gets rid of the ball faster than anybody in America. Right? Last week, they got rid of it in 2.1 on average. So the thing that we kept talking to our D-line is do not get frustrated. You're not going to get to him very much because he just gets rid of it so fast. But what we did talk about doing was getting our hands up and affecting the path of the ball. And we had 13 PBUs, some of them with the D-line, some with the linebacker, some with the secondary. But that's what you have to do when a, when a team works a lot of short, quick passing game. The thing that was a little discouraging is we, had, we tripped once, we got picked once on some big pass plays that you know generally we don't, that doesn't happen. So, we got to look at that and say, okay, why are we tripping? Why did we get picked? You know, was it a lack of awareness? Was it technique? What it was, or was it just eye control? But uh, we'll take a look at that and figure it out. 
Coach, um, Kyle Manongai, 28 carries, 165 yards, uh, career high performance. What did you see from how he performed and how that sort of helped the running game overall? Well, he ran tough. Uh, he ran tough last week as well. You know, um, I want to make sure that we get everybody experienced because in this league you need multiple backs. It's a tough, tough, tough league. So I think we're doing that. You know, we get we got Sam back, uh, got him a couple touches. Even even uh, Salam, we got a couple. You know, Aaron will, Aaron Young, I think, will be good to go uh, this coming week. He may have been able to go today, but uh, you know, I'm not going to risk it with when we have healthy guys. Um, but you're sure right that that uh, that he led led the team. I mean, that's a heck of a rushing day, and they were tough yards too. I mean, he really ran hard. Looked like Tyler Needham had a pretty bad injury. Um, do you have an update on his status? Um, you know, we'll know more. I'll probably be able to tell you more on Monday. Um, but yeah, we're we're concerned about about Ty. Throughout the game, uh, it looked like they came out in a cover one shell, and they stacked the box a lot. A lot of you know coaches in the opportunity to try to blow the top off, or you know take some opportunities on the outside. It seemed like you guys stayed composed and true to the run game. Was that, you know, attempting to send a message, or was that just to stay true to the game plan? Um, not really into sending messages. If it was a message to anybody, it was to our own team that, you know, sometimes there's going to be an extra guy, and that's yours. When I'm talking to yours, I mean the backs. We'll block everybody else, and then you take them on, and you either run them over or you make them miss. And we did that a few times, and sometimes we didn't. Um, I thought the, the, some of the pass game, some of the play action stuff, we were inches away from having a, a huge night. But uh, that's something that we'll work on for sure. Coach, the uh, Rutgers defense calls themselves the dark side defense. What can you say about the defense's play as a whole this season so far and, the, and just their connection as a group? I think, uh, I think they're playing well. I think there's still a lot more that they can do. I think they're just scratching the surface, but I think they're playing well. I think they have a great bond. I think the defensive staff has a great bond. I think the defensive players have a great bond with the staff and with each other. Uh, it's neat to watch. I enjoy being around them. Coach Kyle Manunga, he was one of the first players I think you offered when you returned here. What did you see from him early on in the process and just the maturation over the past couple of years, especially when things have gotten difficult, he's kind of stuck around? Well. I didn't really know for sure, I never know for sure, but I asked this high school coach and Chris told me, he said, I'm telling you coach, I stand on the table for this guy and I trust his opinion. And uh, we took him on that because a lot of people told me don't, you know, he's too small, he can't do it. And uh, when his own high school coach talked with the certainty that he did, you know, I've known him for a long time, he's a heck of a coach. So when he said that, I said, okay, I'm gonna trust you on this one. And he's right. So Cliff Dixon came up with some nice plays. I mean, what has he shown you since he joined the program, and how big was it to get somebody of his experience level and where he's been, obviously, in the past to add to your defense and kind of fill a need there? Yeah, Flip Dixon's done a great job for us. He's a man out there. Um, you know, he's, not, he's, no new, he's no young kid. It's a grown man out there. Like, when he tackles you, you know it. Um, he plays with great poise. You know, he's a huge addition for us. Greg, you had a couple games last year where it was a one-score game in the fourth quarter and stayed a one-score game in the fourth quarter, including this game against Temple. I'm curious if you learned something about your team's resolve uh, overall, it, the way it performed down tonight. Yeah, I guess it's resolve. I think the better, I don't know if the better word, but what they were able to do was hit reset and stop going down that slope and just get back to doing what we do. And that's, you know, we talk about chopping the moment. Whatever moment you're in, you just got to chop that moment. And, and we weren't doing that. We were kind of chasing the game. I was chasing the game. Uh, the team was chasing the game. Not a very good job by an experienced coach when you chase the game like that. So I was really proud. We got together as a team going into that fourth quarter, and we decided, hey, enough. Let's go play the way we're capable of playing and coach the way we're capable of coaching. And some nights is like that, right? Some nights you just feel like you're you're one step forward and a half a step back, and then all of a sudden just pow. So I was pleased. Uh, with Sam Brown coming back, scoring a touchdown, how good was it to just have him back and see him out in the field again? And 
Chris Long couldn't go. Can you clarify uh, on yeah. this case? Yeah, it was great to have Sam back. He's got to work himself back into shape, into game shape. And I don't mean cardiovascular. I mean carrying the football, getting hit, all those things. But I'm anxious to watch that happen because he's a, he's a fine player. Uh, Chris Long, unfortunately, uh, could not play. He was out with, with an injury. Uh, I don't know how long he's going to be out. That's still up in the air. I thought that so far we've been able to, you know, like Jaquay Jackson, he was coming back from a little something. So he came back and performed at a high, high level. So, so far we've been able to fill in the, fill in the spots. Um, you know, I, I think um, Dremel went down. So I, I'm concerned about him too. It was a physical game. Yeah. A um, couple things that, uh, you know, I thought I'd bring up with you is Jaquay Jackson, the, the performance that he had tonight, I, I've seen that coming, but you guys have not been able to see that coming um, because he missed some of camp. But I was really pleased with him. I think that, uh, that that was something we needed. That was a shot in the arm we needed. I also want to talk about our student section. That was really cool. They got there early. They were cheering their, their classmates on early before any, you know, while we were warming up. When we got that delay a game, when, when, when Temple got the delay a game, that was totally home field advantage. Our student section was, I couldn't hear a thing. I mean, the guy was yelling in my ear, I couldn't hear it. That's how loud it was. And, uh, you know, that's huge for us. So I want to thank them. And they look great, all dressed in black for the blackout. That's, that's college football right there. So um, we just got to keep doing it, keep giving them a reason to come, and, and they'll do a great job for us. I know that. So I want to thank them. Appreciate you guys sticking around covering us. Thanks.